All right, so Shodan exposes the true nature of the internet. Uh, first, let me explain what the internet is because most people don't really uh, know holistically what it is. So the internet uh, is a global communications network of, of nodes, but these nodes aren't limited to things that we always think of like smartphones or laptops. A node could be a printer, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, lights, that's uh, air conditioning systems, scatter systems, industrial control systems, all of these are connected to the internet, so they're a part of the internet. It's not just phones and computers. So how we see the internet, or most people, is through uh, a search engine like Google. And Google is just a subset of, what Google shows us is a subset of the internet. So Google shows us websites, uh, we type in keywords and it brings us up, uh, yeah, websites, but Shodan shows us connected devices. So uh, let's see. Shodan, so the, the same way we type in uh, keywords into Google, we type in keywords into Shodan. Like, let's say we're looking for devices in the United States, we type in country, United States. We type in, uh, we're looking for, let's say, nuclear power pants. We type in, um, you know, keywords related to that. And because of this, uh, it reveals the nature of the connected world. So things that we can find on Shodan are uh, internet connected devices, so IoT devices. These can be like smart thermostats or smart uh, toasters, smart dish dishwashers, anything that usually wasn't connected to the internet, internet sorry, is now connected to the internet. And because of that, it's vulnerable because as long as we have the address to where it's located, we could view it. Even if we don't have administrative privileges, we could just look at it, which is already bad enough. But even if we guessed administrative privileges, which usually uh, administrators don't change, uh, then we can actually control these devices, which is really bad. So uh, even boats, power stations, hydrogen fuel cells, and power supplies from Dartmouth Math Department, which I saw this morning, <laughs> and uh, industrial control systems and scatter systems, which our society literally relies on every day. So a little more on this. Uh, industrial control systems are like, let's say, a wind turbine or uh, traffic lights, factory controls, and uh, yeah, things that we rely on every day, but that are part of a nation's critical infrastructure. And we have malware like Stuxnet uh, that attacked SCADA systems and it, it exposed uh, national, national critical infrastructure. So you can blow things up in real life just by finding it through Shodan. These are, yeah. A little bit more about how you might blow something up in real life, uh, like how that might work with the SCADA system. Uh, maybe Stuxnet. Okay, yeah, so you attack a SCADA system. So Shodan will bring you the IP address of something like, let's say, power plant or uh, this morning I saw a UPS, uninterrupted power supply, and you can go to it and just view system uptime and everything. But if you were to get administrative privileges on this, you can control, you could shut down the power supply that a building relies on. You could, you know, modify these types of things or you, they won't even, you could even clear event logs and everything to hide your tracks. Like the administrators won't even know you were there if you're careful enough. And yeah, so it's very dangerous stuff. These are like a bunch of examples. Uh, that I've seen, like public, this is all public, no attack, you just, Shodan gives you an IP address and uh, you're just viewing. So these are like cameras, like from banana plantation or whatever. These are uh, licensed, license plate scanners. So automated scanners that every car goes by, uh, it scans it and stores it and you could just go to it on Shodan and look at the information and modify things or, or if you have administrative privileges. Uh, this is what I saw this morning on the left is the, uh, power supply, uh, it's like a backup battery for a building in the math department of Dartmouth. Uh, and it's cool because like each, they have like a bunch of power supplies, each one is named after a mathematician. This one's the Euler UPS. Uh, and on the bottom left is like a, a really interesting and really scary example of what Shodan can do. So this is uh, a map, a live map of all of the cargo ships or just boats in, uh, you know, in the world. And the, all the data comes from Shodan. So somebody just generated that live map and you could just go on Shodan and find a ship in Hong Kong. Uh, one time, like I read about this online, I didn't know it was that easy. So I just did a Shodan search and like a bunch of ships in the world came up and you could just go and look at critical information about the ship. And the scary, scary thing is that you can actually upload your own firmware. So this isn't something like you're looking at a webcam, like you can upload your own code to a ship and with uh, a little like, Google searching or information gathering, you can find what cargo the ship is carrying. So this is literally like next generation pirate stuff. You can find cargo, like let's say, <laughs> and go and capture a ship. I mean, uh, I'm not advocating, I'm saying what it could do. Yeah, so th 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 those are some of the examples of what really bad things you could do with Shodan. So yeah, exploiting default passwords. Like 
an, admi an administrator just leaves the admin and password and they never change it. That's like the first thing somebody guesses. And even if it's not that, um, devices, like when you have all these types of information, uh, let's say I found like this UPS, I found this UPS, it has all this uh, diagnostic information, right? So I could just Google like uh, the exact model and, the, and it brings me the guide the user, the manual user guide of whatever product in the world that I'm looking at. And these user guides often show you the default logins too. So even if it's not something that you would guess, you could just find it if they haven't changed it, which is dangerous. So a uh, very powerful thing you could do with Shodan is uh, they have an API, uh, application programming interface. So you can bring that in and create your own programs that automate uh, automate things uh, that uses data from Shodan. So let's say you create a Python script uh, uh, to uh, whatever your attack is. Let's say you're looking for a bunch of vulnerable traffic lights or something, uh, and you can just use the program to automate it and make a list of these IP addresses and then go on and do further scanning with other programs. So it's really like uh, a powerful workflow with Shodan. And yeah, and what this is saying, you're automating malware for even script kiddies. So even people with no skills, there are tools that are kind of point and click. You download it and you can just like attack these crazy important systems with, without having much skills. And yeah, I mentioned the cargo ships and Leviathan is uh, one of these tools that I'm talking about where you can just download and it exploits large amounts of vulnerable hosts. So it automates a lot of the hacking process for you. And how to protect against attacks. So what, what we're talking about here is uh, all you're searching for is an IP address. And if you just don't find that IP address, you won't really know. If you don't like, if the door isn't there for you to knock on, you won't really know what's there. So what we need to do is uh, address, filter the addresses. So we, we employ firewalls. If only five people need to access a device, we don't need the whole world to literally see it. So f filter firewalls, block the request when something like, like the way that Shodan works is there's a, a network scanner behind it that's scanning the entire internet. As soon as it finds a device, it updates it in its database and lets us search it. So if if you query something and it says like, yes, I'm here, but I'm not telling you what I am, then you won't have any information about it. You won't, you'll know something is there, but you won't be able to attack it. So more things you can do is clean the banners. So uh, there are a lot of uh, different protocols that devices rely on. So you could do remote connection, remote management, or uh, look at it through a web console. So if you, every time you try to connect to these protocols, uh, the protocol returns a banner, like giving you information, like, hello, I'm FTP, hello, I'm SSH, and there's a message. If you clean these banners, the hacker or attacker won't have much information to go on. Uh, so it'll protect you even further. And of course, you need to change default passwords. So even if someone can view, they can't actually attack and modify your systems. Okay, that's it. What else should I talk about? That's it. Any questions? Uh, so, as far as like searching for things, what kind of like is there like a technical kind of syntax you need to use? Like you can't when you go into Shodan, can you just type in like ships on the ocean? Like how would you search for? Okay, if you go on the explore page, it kind of does it for you. So you don't even need any skills for this one. Like if you type if you type in like webcam, it it gives you the see right here at the top. That's what you would need to search, but it does it for you. So then you could like click on something, and it shows you which protocols are open. Oh, okay, IP camera. See, see, it's protected by a admin. It's protected by a password. Is there a live view on here, though? Okay, this one's this one has permissions on it. But uh, but you can sorry, you can use the explore tab to kind of fill it in for you. So if you go on, you could even find like those ICS systems that I was talking about. Uh, let's see, industrial control systems right here. Wind turbines. These are interesting. United Kingdom. So it, literally, it's just an IP address. All right, what is it? <laughs> it's just a picture, okay, diagnostics. Okay, this is like the literal uptime information. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know what else is interesting. Okay, the, the vulnerable ship story was a sailor visa, let's see. Oh look, there's one in Hong Kong again. I don't think it's online though. See, there's no, uh, in the services it says 161, not 80. So there's no web interface right now. I don't know what 161 is doing, but this is the vulnerability that caused the ships. Uh, their, commu the, their communication software had a vulnerability where it was open. So once you get into it, you could look at everything and also you can uh, move to other more powerful devices on the ship through there. Do they want to know that you logged in? Like, do you, do you 
Well, they, they could. They have an event log. All these devices have event logs that keep track of who logs in and which IP address and everything. But if if they're not smart enough to protect against you going there, they're probably not smart enough to you know do the rest. You can really you could clear your tracks, but you well once you have privileges, you could just clear the log, and then they're looking at the log. They won't they won't know what happened. So. So do home automation devices, uh, like IoT devices, uh, do those show up on here? And if so, like what kind of threats can they present? Like what, I mean, if you have like a, an automated like pool, or for example, oh. like what, uh, what kind of, uh, is that a big deal that it shows up on Shodan? That's a very big deal because one, for example, that that home, auto, uh, the pool automation device, uh, having that exposed to the internet is literally like, that one hole that exposes your entire house. Because if, if it's a smart house, a lot of people have like the Nest thermostats or the uh, Amazon Echo. Well, that's not really, auto well, it, it, you, the auto Echo controls home automation devices, but itself is just like a computer on your network. But these devices, like if, if they're open to the internet, they expose a huge vulnerability. You can go in there and control their entire house because of one vulner vulnerability as their pool. And yeah, they do show up on Shodan if you can find it. <laughs> so can you like, hack someone's Roomba and make them like chase after somebody. Yeah, okay, well I mean, I don't know how to do that, but if, or, I'm sure it's possible. I'm sure if there's an next one in a Roomba. You know, if I, if I, like, that was my life goal. I could oh yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, cool. are there any questions? Okay, I have a better example for this. So. Although Shodan is very powerful, there's like an alternate way. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. so Google, uh, Google is also very powerful. Just the average user doesn't know what type of queries to put in to get useful information. So uh, we type in like regular, you know, sports news, whatever. But if you type in like the same syntax that Shodan has, if you type in those types of things, Google can give you a lot of information. So just by knowing. Uh, what a link to a camera contains, you could search for that and find all the cameras that have that in their link. So I'm gonna search for online devices. Yeah, so these are, this is just a camera, but this database actually reveals a lot of information to Google. Google live camera? Yes, these are live. Uh, oh, I was uh, also, I found, a, I found a camera that was like exposing the, uh, behind the cash register. So it's like a camera in the corner that shows everything and even if you don't have administrator privileges, you could like do basic controls like moving the camera. So I was just looking at it and then the camera started panning to the corner and I guess the uh, employee got scared and like, like turned off the lights in the whole place. And I was just watching. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. You get the idea. Just a question. So why are the, is the reason that these are showing up on Google, uh, that they're indexed by Google because these have web pages associated with these devices or? Yeah, they have a web console. So all these devices, uh, it's, it's really uh, useful to be able to re manage them remotely, but because of that, we have this problem. So unless we filter who's able to access it, that's the vulnerability. Being able to have like a, a service running on port 80, like we're able to go in and uh, through a web console, control the actual device. That's the vulner That's the reason it shows up. Because in the link, the way this one is working, in the link, it has a very specific address. So if we're searching for in Google, it was actually a very simple search too. It was like in URL. We're just checking if this string exists in the URL, and it's bringing everything that does have that, which is a bunch of live cameras. Any more? Any more questions? Right, any more questions? Uh, fetch ship hack. So, what was so you you had an image? Uh, can you speak a little bit more about up. what was going on there? Because I know that you can just there are publicly available things where you can see all ships because they have to like they have to like file logs so you can see yeah. where they are yeah. pretty much like hourly or every six hours more or less. So, what's going on? What was going on with that map that was different than like that? This map right here, or um, the the thing that you showed in your slideshow. I don't know. Yeah, this is this is it right here. This is using Shodan's information to. Well, the thing is, knowing that there's a ship out there and having its IP address is a different thing. This is, this is just showing, this is kind of similar to the map that you're talking about, like general like flight tracker or whatever. But this, the, when I go behind the information, it's, it's, a, it's a big map, it's loading the boats. It gives me the IP address to the web console. It's very different. Like I can go in there and look at the internals of the ship and control things. It's not just me, it's not saying like there's a boat in the like ocean or something like that. 
It's more than that. The kind of things you can see. What kind of things We're you really can do. We're really fascinated with these boats. Yeah, the boat yeah, thing yeah, is really interesting. Pirates. I didn't take a screenshot. Or I did look at the the. Can we pull back? I didn't take a screenshot. Because no, the one we're looking at, it didn't have a web console, so it didn't have. I mean, I could like Google image. That means no, there's no point. It's alright. It's a yeah. It just shows you. Okay, so currently it shows you the diagnostics of the ship. And like the azimuth, the angle, like where exactly it is, like the GPS coordinates. Wow. And then there's the point where you could actually upload your own firmware. So it's just like a router console. It just says like upload your own code to the ship. And uh, it's just a page on the left. And, yeah. Like <laughs> so theoretically, you could you could get into this web console and completely change operating parameters for critical infrastructure like yeah, engines, exactly. cooling Can systems. Can you repeat the question? Exactly. Yeah, just so the yeah, yeah. Like, like I mentioned, like all these devices that we rely on every day, like the, the traffic lights and these these things that are behind the scenes, kind of factories. I even saw like emergency responding call, uh, centers. Like all these things use devices that are connected to the internet. They're part of the internet. And if Shodan brings me that the IP address of that device and it has a web console, or not even a web console, if it's if it's open to the internet in any way, you can connect to it and. If you have malicious intent, you can uh, crack it and get inside it. But even without malicious intent, you could just look at things that have web consoles and see things you're not supposed to see, which is dangerous.